Hi, and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. Today, we're going to be talking about Boolean logic gates, which correspond to Chapter 1 in the Elements of Computing Systems, the book. One question you may have right at the start is, are you going to explain how transistors actually work at the physical level? The answer is no. The great thing about these logic gates is that they allow us to abstract away from the underlying hardware. You can build gates like these from electronics, from water, perhaps even from very small, well-trained dogs. And this is something you'll see again and again as we climb up the computer architecture stack. Higher levels are going to allow us to ignore how the lower levels are implemented. Since I don't know enough about how transistors are implemented to talk about them intelligently, that's where I'm drawing the line. Let me say a word about the process for this class. I'm going to be doing lectures like this one for each chapter. When I say lecture, I mean I'm going to talk about it, there might be some visual aids, but I'm not going to work through the problems in the lectures. You should watch the lecture, read the chapter of the book if you have it, and take a crack at the assignment first. Then, in the following week, I'll start putting out lab videos showing how I did each assignment or each part of each assignment. So Boolean logic gates are simple combinatoric gates. This means that we can pretend that the electricity in the circuits resolves instantly to a correct answer. This isn't actually true, but for now, we can act like it is. Most of these circuits should be pretty straightforward, but they'll give us the experience we need with HDL, the hardware description language used by the course, to take on the arithmetic logic unit and CPU or central processing unit projects. We're going to be implementing these six basic gates, not, or, and, XOR, MUX, and DMUX. When you're done watching this video, start working through the HDL files in the Projects01 directory and begin implementing them. I'd recommend tackling them in this order and put off anything that says 16 or 4-way or 8-way until last. I'll explain what those are in a little bit. The basic operator we're going to use to build out elementary gates is the NAND gate. On the left, you'll see its truth table, and on the right is its schematic symbol. So looking at this truth table, you can view the vertical and horizontal, the first column and the first row, as representing the possible inputs to each of its two inputs. The unshaded area in the, in the center represents the possible outputs of the intersections of those two inputs. Now, very quickly, after you've used the NAND gate, you're going to build these AND, OR, XOR, AND NOT gates. Once you've built them, it is absolutely legitimate and expected that you'll use these gates to build your other projects, uh, or to build each other, in fact. You can, if you really want to increase the level of difficulty, build everything in the course only out of NAND gates and not use these higher level abstractions as you build them. You shouldn't do that. Just use these gates as you build them, please. One special note here, you can see that the NOT gate only has one input, and so it doesn't have anything in the first column. And these are the schematic symbols for each of these gates. If you watched my video on the old Apple II game, Rocky's Boots, you might recognize them. This is a multiplexer, or MUX. It takes three inputs instead of two. We call these inputs X, Y, and selector, or in this schematic, A and B. If the selector is zero, then the MUX will turn whatever value is provided by the first input. If the selector is one, then it will return whatever value is provided by the second input. You can think of the MUX as being the root of all conditionals, or IFs. And this is a demultiplexer, or DMUX. A DMUX takes one data input and a selector, and it routes the data to a different output depending on the value of the selector bit. Lastly, once we've built these basic gates, we'll start combining them into larger structures. And our first efforts are going to be making multi-bit gates. So, for example, an AND gate, as we're going to build it, takes two 1-bit values. 
Well, we don't work very often with one-bit values in computers. We work with 8 or 16 or 32 or 64-bit values. So we're going to take our AND gate and build it into a larger AND gate that takes two 8-bit values or two 16-bit values or two however many bit values. Once you've extended this to a certain point, you could extend it as far as you want using the same logic. We'll also be building multi-way gates. Multi-way gates are gates that take more than two inputs. So we'll make, for example, a MUX that takes four inputs or a MUX that takes eight inputs. And those are implemented in a slightly different way. In particular, our selector bit in those cases is going to be a multi-bit input. Lastly, we will implement at least a few gates that are both multi-bit and multi-way. Lastly, there are a few other options than taking this course. If what really excites you is only the circuit design part of this class, which is true for a lot of people, you can do some different things. So for example, there's a website called nandgame.com that contains more or less only the circuit design portions of this class. Um, I actually did a video on that. You should check it out if you want to see what it's all about. There is another web-based game called <laughs> Digital Logic Design The Game. Uh, it, it is much more like an idle game where you're writing HDL or fake HDL instead of drawing schematics as in NAND game. Another game where you write a fake HDL-like language is called MHRD. It's available on Steam. I kind of like it. It's like a mini version of this part of the class. Lastly, you should be aware that the HDL we're learning to write these circuits in class is not something that's actually used in the industry. So you could take a stab at actually learning Verilog or VHDL, which are the two major hardware description languages that are in use in the real world. Well, that's where we're starting. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I will see you in about a week's time in our labs. Have fun, and thanks for watching.